Jacob. I'm Yuri. And we're going for a drive. Twenty Twenty Cadillac CT Five V with a very hidden launch control. Oh, that sounds good. That sounds good on shift. Yeah, it had a, it had a good bite off the start, but then it was kind of underwhelming. But or spark dork. Three hundred and sixty horsepower, four hundred and five pound feet of torque from a three liter twin turbo V six. And if you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe because you won't even get notifications unless you hit the bell anyways, and it makes our day. And if you like to see numbers go up on the million counter, let us know. Yeah, because it doesn't go up until 10,000. Yeah, so now it's every 1.01. .01. So we previously did a virtual review on this, now we're behind the wheel, how is it? So it's faster than I thought virtually since I was sitting in a chair when I was reviewing it, but sitting in here now, I'm gonna floor it and downshift. It feels very naturally aspirated. And it has really cool pops on upshifts when you're flooring it, because when you're not flooring it, you can't hear that. It definitely sounds a lot better than I thought it would, especially from outside. Inside, you don't get too much of it, but you can get a really cool shift sound when you ping it off the red line from first to second Let and shift see. late. Let me see if I can get this right, because it's a little tricky. Here we go. Got it. <laughs> <Love> it. <laughs> But the actual tone of the exhaust is definitely not my favorite. It's kind of this drony, lack of character sound that I would never remember once I'm out of this car. But that launch control sound. It's cool. Probably one of the cooler launch control sounds, even though it doesn't say launch control. But let's get into how difficult that launch control was to get into because this has a lot of performance traction modes, just like a lot of other GM products. Like the Camaro Z01 1 LE we drove. Yes, so the way that you get into this is very similar. You double tap the traction control button, but you have to double tap it at a totally different rate than the Camaro Z01. And different than the Corvette C8. Yeah, so you have to double tap it a lot faster than both of those cars, and then you get the performance traction options, so then you can put it into race mode, and then you got launch control. But Launch control is only if you're in track mode in your drive modes, not if you're in your V mode, which is a mode that you have on your steering wheel. Yes, so if we actually get out of performance traction and then use our mode button, then we have our actual drive modes, which includes my mode, tour, sport, track, snow, and ice. Then you can also click this V right here and the bottom right will switch to a V. And then you can also put it into my mode, which is kind of like having another V mode. Yeah, it's all kind of weird, very confusing. They make it so difficult because they told us at the C8 launch, they want to make sure that you know you're in launch control if you want to be in launch control, you don't do it by mistake. They made this so difficult that you won't be able to find it unless you have someone walk you through it. They don't even have launch control in the manual, I checked. Yeah, we couldn't find it anywhere, but I know this has it and it was kind of buried and we made it work, but it doesn't say launch control. Now the one that we have is all wheel drive, but the cool thing is you can actually get this also in rear wheel drive, so you have the option to get all wheel drive. But there's no manual anymore. No, obviously not. Well, okay, let's explain the V thing as well. Okay, so V used to be really cool back in the day when the Matrix 2 came out and they were racing and winning everything. V was cool up until very recently. Now V is basically V Sport, which is what V Sport was. So they turned V into like a diluted thing and now Blackwing is the cool V. Okay, Blackwing equals 63 and RS. Yes, but the super confusing thing is the Blackwing engine, which was turbo, was in the CT6, which is totally unrelated to the CT5V Blackwing, which is gonna be supercharged V8. Okay, so to sum things up, V equals C43 and Audi S. Now, yes. And then C63 and Audi RS would equal? Blackwing. All right. You guys get that? This is a transitionary period for Cadillac. Everyone, please have patience. No, they should have just, don't dilute V. They took all these years to make V a cool thing and then they dilute it. Yeah, it's like, they're just gonna make more money off it. Oh, hopefully. Shout out money. <laughs> and you mentioned that there is no manual. There's only this 10 speed auto and it's actually pretty good. So I'm gonna floor it from drive. Not as good as the Camaro, but it picks up pretty quick. And I find that this engine feels very naturally aspirated. There's not a lot of turbo lag. There's not a lot of like slingshot action. You know what sucks is that the gears are so long. It's like 
you can go first to second and second to third. You're like, all right, like, yeah. come on, shift already. Like, geez. The, the first couple gears are definitely way too long. Like, there's no reason for having 10 speeds if the first three are, like, yeah. all the speed limit broken. <laughs> like, and this 10-speed transmission was co-developed by Ford, so it is a derivative of what's in the Camaro and the Mustang GT and even the F-150. That's so weird. Yeah, it's pretty cool, though, because it's a pretty solid transmission. Yeah, no, that's fine. And before we get to cliche corner, let's actually talk about the comfort of the suspension. So we do have the magnetic ride control, and I've noticed that this is super comfortable for daily driving, no matter what mode you're in. You could be in race mode or track mode, and you're totally fine for daily. I didn't feel too much difference when I was driving around and changing the modes up. Yeah, there's not a huge difference, which is why it's comfortable in every mode. It's definitely not too stiff in the stiffest mode. And just before you drive, a final send into cliche corner. Well, actually, I guess my first send through here in an all-wheel drive version, and... Okay, it actually wants to step out the back a little bit, so it's definitely rear biased. This is a lot more fun than I expected it to be for an all-wheel drive version, and let's see. Dude, that's pretty good for all-wheel drive. If you can get into your traction control modes. Yes, because I am in <laughs> race traction, so yeah, that part's very difficult. But the steering is actually really good. I just don't like the heaviest steering. It kind of reminds me of weird BMW steering, but the regular steering is really good. Yeah, as like a driving car, it's nice. Now let's get you to drive this car. So let me try to get into this traction mode. Good luck. Nope. 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 Slower. A little bit faster. A little bit slower. Uh, press it again a little bit slower. No, a little bit faster than that. There you go. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. It's what? actually pretty difficult. And how do I change it? Up Just... and down with the modes. Oh, okay. Yeah, up is down and left and right. Just launch control. Launch it for me, Yuri. Pops are solid. Yeah, it's, it doesn't push you that hard. But it the, does right off the line. Off the line, and yeah. then it's chill, but the sound is cool, so whatever. Cool-ish. All right, you know what I want to talk about? Some of the tech in here. We've got a video recorder, like a lot of GM models. Since this is a V, I thought we were going to have cool stuff like the Camaro and the Corvette with all your RPMs and stuff. You know what we have? A uh, dash cam. A glorified 360, well, it's not glorified. It's a 360 dash cam. That's pretty cool, though. Not for a V model. Like, well, this isn't a V model, Yuri. It this says, is a V model. Okay. A, a V model. <laughs> and I wanted to record something while driving by on the Gardner Expressway in Toronto because we had our billboard for 1 million subscribers up there. Shout out billboard that we paid for. <laughs> but I didn't have an SD card in the trunk at the time, so I couldn't record it while driving by in the Cadillac. Oh, I'm sorry. You have to put the SD card in the trunk? Yeah, but I mean, like, GM's always thrown a weird spot. I think, like, the Corvette was down here, the Camaro was over there. And then there was that one time where the manual said it was somewhere and it was completely wrong. Because they haven't changed it yet in the CT5. The SUV thing. CT5? I don't even know. No, the CTs are the... XT's. XT. XT5. Yeah. <laughs> XT6. XT6. Man, that's confusing. Then moving on to this infotainment, we've got a screen that's angled 45 degrees back where the Camaro we drove earlier was 45 degrees towards us almost. That was more like 20 degrees, but yeah, the other way. Look, I need to emphasize how <laughs> I know. degree it is. It is really weird, and I would love an answer from GM as to why they keep changing the angles of them. I'm sure it's for glare, but why is it going both ways? I think they just, depending on whichever car is facing what, like if there's a sunroof, they're like, we need to change the angle so it hits back here. Maybe, but the coolest thing that I appreciate about this is how big Android Auto is on this massive screen. It's the full map and we've got apple carplay everything in here functionality wise is pretty good but we don't have rewinding satellite radio stations here but we had it in the camaro that's a little weird totally weird and the best feature of all time for this infotainment the volume and tuning knobs are beside each other for the driver but what's weird about the volume and tuning knob up here so volume normal tuning you expect it to just go through your channels but when you click it then it shows a whole list of everything with what's playing so that's not really that intuitive, but lucky for us, if we use this rotary wheel down here and turn it, it does exactly what the tuning knob should do. I know, it's a little weird. So we do have this little command center thing down here with more volume and stuff. It's kind of nice having both, and on the steering wheel, I think they did a very good job with like not taking anything away that you'd want to use. Yeah, and another good job that they did is deleting all of the gloss black from the previous generations of Cadillac Q, and now we have this sparkly glass, and I'm okay with it because it doesn't look super dusty. Yeah, we've got this home button right in the middle, which is nice, like a hard home button. Yeah. Who does that? It's a very intuitive <laughs> system. Like, I got to give them a lot of credit for this. And then all the climate control is nice and silver, shining right into my eyes right now, but usually it doesn't. <laughs> 
But it is matte black, which is nice. Then we've got a wireless charger down there, which I won't use because I have to plug in for Apple CarPlay anyways. Then we got a pretty decent area here for your smaller medium cup of coffee. So that passes. Okay, the shifter. Oh, sorry. To get it into drive, you go down. To get it into manual, you also push down. I have found myself in manual by mistake so many times in this car. Yeah, that part's not very intuitive. A left, right would have been better. Yeah. Visors now. Three, two, one. Yes, good job. And we got a little arrow. Full pass, 360 reverse cameras. Super high res. We have them here, they all work great. And what's cool is we don't have that 360 camera that like superimposes the car in 3D with a really bad perspective. I'm happy they excluded that. Then we've got a head up display. And just like all the other GM products we like, it's got hard buttons to control everything on the left, so it's not confusing at all. And then we have analog gauges with some digital in the middle. Overall, pretty much the same system as in every other GM model, and it is pretty good. It's pretty good, but I think it's kind of like a wasted opportunity because all I want is my speed and big numbers. You know what I have right now? My speed, then my speed above that, and then my speed above that in the head-up display. I don't need to know I'm going 50 kilometers an hour three times in one vertical line. But you said you wanted to know your speed, so they're letting you know your just, speed. Just once big, not three times small. But yo, paddle quality, like pretty good. Oh yeah, like nine out of 10. Do you like the Alcantara steering wheel? I do, it's actually really comfortable and I like how it looks too. Yeah, all the buttons here are nice. I don't like these weird GM buttons that are like up, down, like. You sometimes think that you need to press the button that isn't a button. Just copy the Kia buttons, please. <laughs> and then we also have some really nice carbon fiber out here. And then we also have some Bose speakers, which look really cool and I, sound pretty decent. I think they did a really good job of making this a luxury sport interior. Exactly, and the seats are also really comfortable. They're decently bolstered but you were complaining about the headrests. Yeah, so that part's actually not very comfortable and I legitimately cannot find a comfortable driving position because the headrest is just too far forward. So I have to keep moving my seat back in order to get my head in the right position. Okay, how about back seat room? It's terrible for a sedan like this. But the seats do fold down and you got a decent amount of room in the trunk and the trunk is kicked open. When it's dark, it'll shine a little Cadillac logo and that's where you kick. But it's manual close, which is I like a know. peasant type thing. What's cool is the handle in there to close it, it's got a little like rubber thing because you need that little bit of grip to bring it down. Yeah. Hey, we should probably talk about the looks. Yeah, okay, so I think this looks pretty good. Yeah, I don't really like silver cars, but this does a really good job of popping in a lot of different lighting conditions. Well, it's more gray than it is silver, but I do like how this looks, and it actually looks really good for a gray paint. Sorry, silver, gray, that's all the same to me. The front end is pretty good. It's got that new Cadillac style, but they also kept the old kind of Cadillac style with the cool headlights that go all the way down, which they're broken up in this one, not on the CT4. And they took a page out of the Mercedes book by having some fake grills on the V which matches the 43. And the grills look a little bit cooler than the regular CT5 as well and it's all kind of blacked out as well. And then do we have a signature under the hood? Why would we have that? This is an assembly line vehicle, Yuri. C43 doesn't have a signature, neither does this. <laughs> Moving around to the side, we also have a V badge so that you know this is a V Sport. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like the Lexus Fs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. But even those say, yeah, whatever. Then how about the wheels? I think they're pretty decent, but V models, well, real V models have looked much better. They're pretty non-offensive, don't really stand out, but what would be the Continental recommended tire? The Extreme Contact Sport. And then as for body lines, they're nice, they're crisp, but you kind of had a problem with the back near the window. Yeah, it's got this weird kink back there that they just kind of, I don't know, I guess they just couldn't figure out what to do with it and they just did what they did. Okay, and before we get to the back end, I'm gonna give it a little boot through Cliche Corner. All right. Pretty good. Pumped in audio, not very stoked on that. A little bit oversteery. I bet you in winter this thing would be a blast. Oh yeah, for sure. And moving around to the back, we do have some pretty good exhaust back there, but it is 2020 real, so. Yeah, well, at least they're not taking a page out of like the Lincoln book and the Ford book where everything's fake, pointed down and whatever. So well, I'm, I'm this, okay with it. This is literally out of the Mercedes book. Like they're exactly yeah, the same. It's like the 43. <laughs> yeah, well. Except this has a launch control, which the 43 doesn't, even though this one isn't official, so I guess it's. But this is exactly like the 63 because they're square tips. Okay, do you like the little spoiler? Yes, but it's very insignificant. <laughs> How about the taillights? Taillights are pretty good. They did the Cadillac thing where they're straight down, but they kind of broke them up with some lines. So overall looks, no complaints, pretty good. Wish it was a brighter color. But it matches up with a C43 or a BMW equivalent or an Audi equivalent. Of S or M Sport. Yes. Or M Performance. M Performance. Something yeah. 50 M. M340i. M yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and one thing we forgot to mention, Yuri put us into super cruise mode. 
That doesn't have Super Cruise. No, but you can apparently get it, which is nice, but it doesn't come standard with it. Don't worry. Once we get to 2 million subscribers, <laughs> we'll be able to use a Super Cruise vehicle. We still haven't tried Super Cruise yet. So. But, but we just finally tried Tesla's full autopilot stuff. So, like, it, it takes some time when you're up in Canada. Or did we? Is that video out yet? It will be. Let us know if you watched that video if it came out first. So I feel like that's pretty much everything with the Cadillac CT5V. Except the price. Hit me with the price. It starts at $49,798. Damn, that's pretty good, Canadian. And this one's optioned out to $65,523. I think that's a pretty good price considering who they're competing with and it's American luxury sport. That's exactly it. They priced it very well. And if you deleted the all-wheel drive, which I would probably recommend even though I haven't tried the rear-wheel drive one, but then you can do burnouts, so I always recommend burnouts, you save yourself $2,200. So this, a C43 sedan, or an M340i. I would go M340i all day. Yeah, to be honest, that thing was freaking amazing. We got to drive it at Porto Mau, which they're gonna have some Formula One races, which they might've already had by the time this comes out. And we also drove the track with a former Formula One driver. So basically we are Formula One drivers now. And, and we got to slide it and it was easy to slide. I don't think the 43 would be that much fun at all. And this might get close, but I really don't think so. Yeah, so I would definitely go M340i. Even though it's more expensive, I think the value is there because of the performance. But on its own, this is pretty sick. Yeah, there's nothing actually wrong with it, but everything else exists, and I think everything else does a better job of existing in this class. But if you're trying to save yourself some money, this is pretty okay, good. Well, the only thing wrong with it is that they diluted the V-Line. Well, that is a big thing that's wrong with it. You're right. So let us know what you think of the CT5V. And watch this playlist of sedans. Yeah. Just sedans. Sedans are going extinct. I know, I really like sedans, you know that. But anyways, sedans. 